Okay guys, so we're looking at the Digi slider here. This is a motorized slider, uh, primarily targeted for time-lapse. Um, this one is about 33 inches long, but we have about 29 inches of slide here. You can see that it sits on a flat surface, doesn't have any kind of like those all-terrain legs, just little rubber nubs here. It'll slip, sit flat on a uh, table or flat surface and you can operate it manually. Now you notice that there is a belt already installed on here. This is how the unit came, so there's no assembly um, at this part. There's a little crank that you can add if you want to operate this manually. Uh, but let's face it, the reason you'd be interested in this slider is because of its motorized option. So uh, we'll get that set up in a second. Let me remove this crank handle over here on the side. All right, so it does come with a motor, a belt. These are the two screws that hold the motor in place. Um, this is a battery box here, and you can see there are eight AA batteries. You can use other power options, but you'll get this one just to run it on AA batteries. Uh, this is the remote here where you can set the time of exposure, how often to fire the uh, camera, and also the distance it should move along the rail between every shot. Um, and then here we have a bag of different connectors that will operate the shutter on your camera and an extension cable that goes from the remote to the camera. So uh, before we build this up, that's one of the things that makes this slider a little bit more advanced than your basic motorized slider. Uh, a lot of the sliders out there will have a motor, it has a set speed, maybe you can ramp it up, maybe you can make it slower. But what ends up happening is the slider is continuously moving. Maybe it's moving quick, maybe, maybe it's moving slow, but it will continuously be moving. Uh, with this remote here, and the way they have this set up, is it's pro programmed, or you can program it, to actually move the platform a certain distance, fire the camera, and it'll actually sit there. And then it will move the platform again and fire the camera, and it'll sit there for whatever period of time you have that set to. Now that's great for options when your camera needs to uh, take several images. Maybe it's taking a long exposure where your shutter is open for 10 seconds. You don't want the slider to be moving the whole time the shutter is open. It'll just blur your image out. So something like this is going to let you do a shoot, move, shoot. Um, so anyway, we'll get that set up. Very easy. Now, once you lock the motor in place here, you're not going to be able to slide this. So before you lock this in place, make sure you slide this all the way down to one of the ends. So I'll move it down to this end over here. The belt just slips on to the motor and then we just slide it through the back here. And then we slide this over the gear. Now these little screws will just go right in place. All right, there you go. Two little screws hold the motor in place. The bracket's designed to stay in place. Um, very simple to set up. Um, and as you can see, we have this all the way down to one side. So when we begin our travel, it'll go all the way down the rail. If we had this in the middle and then you attach the motor, because you can't move it manually anymore, you'd have to just turn on the remote and try to drift it to one side, which can take a little while. So make sure you have it set to one side before you attach the motor. All right. so. This is the battery box. I have a little bit of Velcro back here that I put together. I just stick that on back. This cable goes into the power port. Then there's a little on off switch on this battery case. Um, so we can kick that on. I'm going to choose one of the connectors out of this bag. This is for the 5D Mark III. Also works with the Mark II and the 7D or other similar cameras. So we'll plug that into the shutter port of the 5D Mark III. We have an extension cable here, it's just a 2.5. That goes into the camera port right over here. The motor will plug directly into the motor port right in the middle over there. All right, so we'll kick the camera on already firing because I have it set to a half second and uh, the distance of travel here is very minimal. Let me increase this. 
Okay, so we choose either the left or right side, which way we want this to move. I'm gonna move this way. So you'll start to see that every half second, because I have the interval set here, it will take a picture and then it will move the platform and take another picture. Now let me slow that down for you guys, to something like 10 seconds. So as you can see, there's a long delay here. And uh, right now it's probably around 10 seconds or maybe a little bit longer. And if we wait long enough, you'll see that it will move and then fire the shutter. And then it will wait another 10 seconds or so. Okay. So we'll wait one more time here. All right, so as you can see, that will set up our uh, time between shots. This right here will um, pretty much set the distance of travel between those shots. So I'm going to go all the way. I'm going to crank it all the way up to 10 and show you how far it moves in between those shots. We'll actually speed up the exposure as well. So you can see it's traveling further um, between the intervals before it's taking the shot. So that's going to allow us to get faster uh, movement down the rail as we're doing a time lapse. So we don't have to sit in one location for like three hours, but you can set the uh, increment of movement up here at the top. And again, this one is um, how long before it starts doing its next action. Now I'm going to just delay this to somewhere about 20 seconds or so. And we'll talk about that. So again, um, the reason you may want to have longer delays between shots, between movements, is if you're doing, say, a long exposure, your shutter's open for 10 seconds, you don't want the slider to start moving while the camera's in uh, mid-shot. Otherwise, it'll just blur that image. Um, also, the 5D Mark III, I've done something with the, uh, the built-in HDR feature, and that one will take the three shots stitch it together into one image and then it has to move again. But there's a, a little bit of a delay in that process of HDR, which is like six seconds or so. So you can set all of that in here and you could set again the distance. Um, so what we're going to do right now is I just show you some really short examples of stuff that I've done uh, with this. And uh, here you go. All right, we're here downtown Reno, Nevada. We have the Digi slider, time lapse slider out here. Now, the unique thing about this slider is it's not a continuous movement. The motor is not always spinning. Uh, there are some sliders out there where you buy the right speed of your motor and it just continues down the track. Now, that could be a problem if you're doing long exposures, if you're dragging the shutter because your shutter will be open and then the slider continues to move and it'll blur your image. Now, this guy right here, you dial it in the way you want. So it actually will move the platform, then fire the shutter and then move the platform again and then fire the shutter. So you dial in how long your shutter is going to be open for so that it's not moving while the camera is taking a picture. So as you can see, it is nighttime here. We have our shutter open a little bit longer, but we don't have to worry about it blurring out because it's actually going to pause as it takes that long exposure and then it'll move later on. So that's the cool thing about this slider compared to the other ones that just continuously move the entire time. All right, so it's uh, daytime here in Reno, Nevada, and um, I have the 5D Mark III uh, with the Digi Slider um, doing some time lapse here. Now, unlike other sliders that will have a continuous, continuous movement, um, I'm doing something a little bit different. The 5D Mark III and some other cameras have a built-in HDR function. And what it does is it'll take three different exposures, so three different pictures, and then it'll stitch it all together. Now that takes a little bit of time. It takes about six seconds for it to fire three images and then stitch the images and save that one image. So because I'm doing a real-time HDR time-lapse, um, I don't want the slider to continue moving as it's taking every image. I want the slider to just stop in its position, take three exposures, stitch it together, 
save the one image, and then move again. So that's kind of the great thing about the digi slider here is you can set the interval and you can set the distance that it's going to move. And so what I've done here is I've timed how long it takes for my camera to take those three exposures and save it. And I've set that into the remote here. So right now I have the platform moving at about 10 seconds, um, which is more than enough time uh, before it moves the platform a certain amount of distance. So uh, I don't know if you guys could hear it, but it's taking three images and it's saving it. And then uh, the slider will slightly move and then it'll repeat that process. So by the end of this process here, I'll already have an HDR time lapse. And uh, that's not something that you could do if you're using a motorized slider where the slider is just continuously sliding all the way across. All right guys, so that was some very, very short examples. I didn't wanna bore you with some long time lapses, but hopefully you get the idea about how this unit works. It will move and then start the shutter action, uh, wait for a delay, move again and start the shutter action. And there's a couple of reasons why you wanna have that. Now, obviously my time lapse was not that great, but there are some really great examples at the DigiSlider website. Um, and for information about that, I'll have a link below this video or at the blog at cheesycam.com.